Hi, Jewish mom. My husband and I have a rabbi and rabbitin that we are very, very close to. Um, this is a couple that um, that over the years, like if we've had to make any kind of important decision, like where where to send our kids to school, um, where to where my daughter should do her national service next year, um, what um, any any sort of kind of important decisions that we need to make in our lives, this is the couple that have really like accompanied us throughout our. Um, who have really accompanied us throughout our, you know, 20 plus years in Israel, 23 something years in Israel, um, and really helped us make decisions that have really um, put our, you know, helped helped us, you know, raise our family and live our lives here. Um, so um, this, uh, the Rebetzin in this couple, the Rebbeinit in this couple, she's a person that I admire a great deal to the extent that I, that, that next to this person, I feel um, and more, I think, than probably than anyone else in the world. She's a person I just, next to her, I tend to feel quite inferior. She's a person who is so much wiser than me, so much stronger than me, so much, I think she's a better mother than me in many ways. Um, she is, she's more successful than me um, in the various things. She's a, she's very successful professionally. She's also um, a, a member of a sort of very important um uh, committees in Israel, which are really helping to shape Israeli society. She's just a very impressive person, also a wonderful person. And so basically next to her, I end up feeling like really like a complete, uh, not complete failure, but somewhere around there. Um, so, so this past Shabbat, we had a big surprise. Um, the, this, uh, this couple, the Rabbi and Rebison, um, they, um, it turned out that they're in Jerusalem this, this Shabbat and they want to come to us for a meal. Um, this is something that happens once every few years, um, and, uh, and it's really a big honor, and it's really wonderful spending time with them. Um, and um, but there was some an interesting interchange that we had um, at the Shabbat table. So uh, so we were talking about um, we we're talking about um, the summers. Um, and how this summer we're going to be going to America and Canada, where my husband's from, um, and um, so and my husband's family they have this they have a summer house on a lake, and so all my kids learn how to swim at this lake, and um, and so the wife, the Rebbitson, says says, oh, your kids go swimming in the lake, is isn't that terrifying? It's like, no, she said she said she said I am terrified of water. I have never learned how to swim. This is a person who does many, many things, very, very impressive, very like, you know, very kind of take on the world kind of person. And I was like, you never learned how to swim. Nope, never learned how to swim. You know, always my husband always took care of, you know, uh, helping the kids, teaching the kids how to swim. And um, and I and I even mentioned, I said, I said, you know, I am, um, I, I said, one of the highlights in the summer is like, you know, my husband and I, um, we can go canoeing together. Not a big canoe trip. We don't go whatever <laughs> doing big things, but just like on the family lake, um, going on a canoe, and the, and the, and this Robinson looks at me with this look of terror and says, says, is is it isn't that terrifying? Aren't you terrified to go in a canoe? And I could just see like her face just like was just the, this look of terror. I was like, no, it's not terrifying for me to go in a canoe. I was like, wow. So this just kind of brought home for me. It's something that I say all the time, but um, you know, it's like really like brought home like how true it is. And you know, everyone has weaknesses. You know, you see someone that you think is like you see someone that you think has no weaknesses, no faults, no anything, and all of a sudden, you know, to see like, okay, no, everyone has weaknesses, everyone has fears. It's something that something that um, something that Dina Friedman discusses. In her mastery course, which I did a few years ago, um, she talks about she talks about um, infatuation and the problem with infatuation of seeing a person like I do with this Rebbeinit, um, and really infatuating, just like looking at her and just saying, well, "What a perfect person! If only I could be anything! If if only I could come up to the toes of this Rebbeinit in so many ways, you know." Um, but infatuation is never true. It's always it's always an illusion. Like there's no such thing. It's like, like if you look closely at the person, you will always see faults. You will always see, you know, fears and weaknesses. And it's the flip side, and Dana Freeman says, it's the flip side of, you know, of hatred of someone. When you hatred, when you hate someone, then you villainize them and make them that they're completely and totally evil. Well, that, that doesn't exist either. 
I think it almost doesn't exist. Okay. I think maybe it does exist occasionally that there are people who are completely evil, but, um, but I think that it's like the flip side, but in, you know, 99.99% of cases there, you know, people, people are complex. Just as, the, just, as, just as it's not fair and not accurate to infatuate a person and say they're completely perfect, there's no such thing as a person who's completely terrible and completely evil and completely has no redeeming, qual redeeming, redeeming qualities whatsoever. Um, so um, uh, it's a bit of a tangent, but I want to discuss just something very interesting um, that um, a response that Rabbi Niven gave to a question that I, to a question um, that I asked in a, in a class that he was giving. Um, Rabbi Niven um, gave a gave a um, gave a special class, a special a series of classes on challenges and living through challenges, um, and he was talking about how um, how um, it's a very powerful idea based on the Derech Hashem. The Ramchal, that um, that the greatest pleasure that a human being can feel in the world in life is to um, is is to feel um, is to feel that in a challenge in a challenging situation that you have made the right that you've made the right decision made the right choice right that you have stood up within a challenge and done the right thing and through that that you have you know grown and you've and you can look back and just feel such joy. From seeing like how you've grown, how in a difficult situation, how you made the right choice and did the right thing, um, and um, so um, so I asked a question, and he said, and so, so Rabbi Niven just said just said like that that this is that this is how Hashem this is how Hashem set up the world in order to give us in order to give us maximum pleasure, He created a world of nisyanot. And it sounds it sounds counterintuitive, like okay, like you know, God gave us the you know, to have pleasure, but really, I think like if you know, if you look at your life, you look back at the at the challenges that you've been through, and look at how you've grown, really, it's a very very pleasurable feeling. You know, how Rabbi Niven always says this, but I'll ask you, you know, how many of you would want to go back five years, ten years, fifteen years ago, like thinking of the person who you were then, um, before you grown in the way in, in the various ways that you have grown. You know, I don't think any of us would would want would want to go back. All of us have grown, and all of us have changed. All of us have grown through the through the experiences, including the challenging, maybe especially the challenging experiences which we have had over the last, you know, 10, 15, 20 years. Um. So, um. But I I, I ask the question, you know, what about people? There are people who have you know experienced challenges, and they are you know, and they don't pass the challenge. They don't, they don't, uh, you know, they, uh, some, some people are destroyed by challenges, you know, by the challenges with that they face in life, you know, um, so, um, so, you know, for, for, for example, you know, you see, um, I, there, there's something interesting that I saw in the, um, uh, in the, in the, in the, um, the Independence Day and the Independence Day ceremony, um, this last week. So there were um, there were many people who had who in times of adversity had acted heroically, and those were the there were there were twelve people who were chosen to light the torches, opening opening up Independence Day um, for for all of Israel, um, and uh, you know and some of the people it was it was really really impressive. There was one girl who um, at the age of seventeen um, during in um, during the war with Gaza. Um, I think it was called Suketan, or I don't remember exactly. It was one of the wars with Gaza. Um, so, uh, so she and Sderot, she was 17 years old, and she she organized activities for all of the children um, in the um, who, who who were stuck in bomb shelters in Sderot, which is like right next to Gaza. Um, so these kids were spending weeks in bomb shelters, and she and she was running from bomb shelter to bomb shelter. It was quite amazing, um, and. Um, uh, her name, I think, it was Hal Halal Barelli. Um, another woman, um, a religious woman. Her name uh, is I don't remember her first name. Tsukenik. So she um, she went through a very difficult difficult divorce, very very difficult marriage followed by a difficult divorce, and now she is like an advocate. She she set up an uh, she set up an organization to guide women through divorce, to to guide religion, um, to to to, to guide women um through the challenges and to like really advocate for them and guide them and be a support system for women. Who who are going through situations like she went through. Um, another woman um, from Ramle, who was, um, she, at the age of 12, she was sexually assaulted by a neighbor. Um, and um, and about a year later, then she told her parents, you know, made a police complaint against this neighbor. And now, um, I think maybe she's 19, she, she like, she runs, um, now, now she like runs an organization advocating for victims of sexual assault and, um, 
and, you know, and proposing legislation and, you know, being a support system for victims of sexual assault. So, um, so you see these people and on the one hand, like you see these people, like they are the success stories. These are the people who passed the Nisayon. These are the people who look back and like the Derech Hashem says, they have the people who look back and say, wow, I did it. I went through a very difficult Nisayon and look what I did. Now I'm helping hundreds, maybe thousands of people who are going through that same Nisayon. Look what I did. But what about, what about, you know, uh, a victim? Uh, what, 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 what about victims of, dare, of like a victim, Shalom of sexual assault, um, who then, you know, like her, you know, she just is broken. She's broken from what she went through. And she's not telling anyone. She didn't make a police complaint. She never told her parents. She never did anything as a result of what happened to her, okay? So Rabbi Niven said, um, so, Ra so I asked Rabbi Niven this question, like, so what about the person? It's very, very nice, you know, the person who, you know, God created a, a, a situation where, or this person who, the person who, um, this person who creates, you know, the, becomes an advocate to, for hundreds of victims of sexual assault, and then, you know, isn't that, isn't that amazing to see how they have grown and become heroic and whatever, but what about the person who didn't? What about the person who's broken by the same challenge? So Rabbi Niven said something interesting. Um, which has kind of really switched something in my mind, in my heart, about the way that I think about um, challenges um, in my own life and the way I see other people going through challenges. So the first thing is, he said, he said, not everybody passes this, you know, not everyone's going to pass. And that's just the way that the world works. Like, you know, it wouldn't be this intense pleasure of, of, of succeeding through the test and like becoming a, you know, uh, growing through the test if there wasn't also the, 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 the possibility of not, of not, of not passing the test. Okay, so there are people who will not, who will not, who will fail the tests, you know, as hard as that is to hear. But also, so also, but something very, very, really made an impact on me is he said, you don't know, though. You don't know. You don't know who passes the test and who doesn't pass the test. You look at a person, it looks like externally, externally, it looks like this woman who was, you know, this woman who went through like this terrible divorce and marriage and then divorce. And now she's the advocate for hundreds and thousands of women who are going through divorce. And you know, she's the one who passed the test. But what about the woman, you know, a different person who just, you know, who, who goes through a very difficult nisayon like that, Shalonida, and she just heals silently, doesn't do anything, doesn't become an advocate and heroic, and she's not lighting the torch at Independence Day, whatever, but she's a person who just healed you know, um, she's a person who just, um, who just, who, she's, she's a person who, you know, decided to raise her children um, and managed to raise them despite what she'd been, despite what she'd been through, raise her children in a positive environment. Maybe that's passing the test. Maybe the person who healed is just passing the test. Maybe the person who, 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 who refuses to, you know, who, who, um, who, who just uh, is somehow able to, uh, to, to heal from what, to heal from what she went through um, and be a healthy mother and, you know, and feel compassion for another person who's going through the same thing, even if she doesn't even practically help them, like this other person, just feeling compassion for others and feeling compassion for other people in difficult situations, maybe that's passing the test. Looking from outside, you don't know. So just going back to my initial, when I was talking about this Robertson, like, you know, it, it might be like, I feel like so inferior to this person, you know, like if she was in a, if she was in a difficult situation, I was in a difficult situation, she would do so much better. She's so much stronger, so much wiser, so much ev more everything than I am. But you know what? Maybe the way that she would pass the test isn't the way that I would pass the test. Um, and maybe in my own small way, you know, that I would pass the test and she would in her own great heroic way would pass the test. And that and I and I think in Hashem's eyes it's it's equally wonderful. You know, and we all deserve to feel equal pleasure from making the right decision in difficult situations and in challenging times. Okay. So in conclusion, I want to bless all of us that um, that first of all, don't infatuate. Don't infatuate, don't, 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 don't infatuate, you know, people, everybody has weaknesses and everyone has, you know, the, the person that you're infatuating, the person that you, that you think is perfect has faults and weaknesses and you have faults and weaknesses. And, um, but, in, and also in terms of, you know, in terms of challenges. Um, so, um, so, you know, it's unfair to judge. It's not accurate to judge and to say, okay, this person, you know, look at what a heroic way they reacted to a certain challenge and the way that another person failed a challenge or didn't fail. In, in most cases, you know, if you look closely or if I, the way that Hashem sees, sees the situation, that Hashem sees 
the hero in everyone, the hero, the heroic way that we all are dealing with the various challenges, even if you, you know, even if we aren't, you know, the heroic person who's up there lighting the torch on, you know, Yom Atzmaut, that we in our own quiet internal way can also, can also be, can also be heroines. Um, so I want to bless, on that note, I want to bless all of you just once with an amazing day.